Welcome to Faith and Science. I'm Dr. John Ashton. When I was uh, uni in the uh, mid-1960s, uh, I was very interested in physics. I really enjoyed physics and, um, and applied mathematics. And I remember that um, in second year, uh, one of the textbooks that we had in applied mathematics was called Electricity by uh, C.A. Coulson. Uh, C.A. Coulson was a um, professor uh, of applied mathematics at Oxford University at the time, and uh, he was an eminent Methodist. And um, it was interesting that while he'd written uh, and published many, you know, over 150 research papers, chiefly in the fields of quantum theory and theoretical chemistry, one of his greatest interests lies in the relation of science and religion. And he wrote this book um, called um, Science and Christian Belief. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, book. One of the things that he points out in this book is that <clears throat> uh, one of the things that underpin science are presuppositions. And those presuppositions are actually based on the Christian worldview. And it is the adoption of these suppositions that has led to the greatest advances in science, uh, particularly in the, in the West. And he talks about how there were um, you know, many misunderstandings that people really don't have a clear understanding of the role Christianity has played in the advancement of science. And this is a great shame because we've removed you know, the studies of Christianity, particularly from our secular uh, curriculum, thinking that, uh, no, we don't want people to, to know about God. Um, you know, we have to be completely neutral on this. And, and this is really silly. And it's, it's interesting that Whitehead, uh, sorry, uh, Coulson, uh, talks about uh, certainly people that raised this issue were um, A.M. Whitehead, the, one of the great polymaths, uh, of the early uh, 1900s, but also Michael Polanyi. Now, most of us probably haven't heard of Michael Polanyi, uh, but he was a Hungarian physical chemist, um, and he is responsible for quite a, a number of theories in, in science. Matter of fact, two of his uh, students won Nobel Prizes, and one of his sons won a Nobel Prize. And um, Polanyi uh, was uh, born in a Jewish family, but later became a Christian, a very strong supporter of Christianity. And in 1946, he gave, at the time, what was a famous lecture called Science, Faith and Society. And he opened um, his talk with these words. He said, I shall re-examine here the suppositions underlying our belief in science and propose to show that they are more extensive than is usually thought. They will appear to coextend with the entire spiritual foundations of man and go to the very root of his social existence. Hence, I will urge our belief in science should be regarded as a token of much wider convictions. And it's interesting that Coulson, after quoting that, goes on to say, the greater part of our schoolboy's acceptance of science and rejection of religion springs from his unexamined belief that science accepts no presuppositions and must therefore be superior to a Christianity which is overloaded with them. Yet this view is wholly wrong. Now, unfortunately, this is the view that has permeated the people that are largely responsible for our education today. They think, uh, again, that, uh, you know, science has um, is, is disproved God, for example. And this is something that uh, these brilliant scientists like Coulson and uh, Polanyi uh, point out that this is this is very, very wrong. It's interesting too that a little further on, Coulson goes on to um, you know talk about some of the greatest um, 
discoveries in science have been underpinned by the fact that the scientists at the time believed that nature was going to be ordered, was going to follow systematic laws, just like there are the moral laws of the Ten Commandments, so there would be the laws in nature. Um, It's uh, interesting that... um, Well, for example, um, some of the uh, considerations of these uh, laws uh, give rise to um, this knowledge that, for example, the laws should be fairly straightforward and follow, for example, mathematical principles. Um, Again, one of the great Christian scientists, James Clark Maxwell, and uh, C.A. Coulson says, uh, to whom we owe the systemization of electricity and magnetism, had on one occasion verified a certain law, Ohm's law, to an exceedingly high degree of accuracy. And this gave rise to his famous comment. So this is Clark Maxwell's comment. And of course, Clark Maxwell was another great physicist who demonstrated that light was a combination of electric and magnetic fields. And a very strong Christian in the late 1800s who very strongly opposed, for example, the development of the theory of evolution arguing, for example, how could uh, atoms evolve? Um, uh, But anyway, Maxwell goes on to write, it is seldom, if ever, so searching a test has been applied to a law which was originally established by experiment and which must still be considered a purely empirical law as it has not hitherto been deduced from fundamental principles of, of dynamics. But the mode in which it has borne this test not only warrants our entire reliance on its accuracy, but encourages us to believe that the simplicity of an empirical law may be an argument for its exactness. And that's why Einstein um, uh, actually, again, referred to this fact of the, the evidence of simplicity of these laws in nature verifies to the fact that they're not likely to be the chance of random, blind chance uh, um, actions in nature. It's interesting that um, uh, C.A. Coulson goes on to, to write, so since the order of physical nature is one aspect of God showing himself to his children, <clears throat> what they see and what they do when they study it is most intimately bound up with what he is and what they are. In other words, he's referring to the fact that God is this lawgiver. Our creator is this amazing supreme being that ordained the laws of nature, ordained the values of the different constants so that the universe functions as it is, ordained these mathematical relationships between the different functions that we observe in physics and chemistry. And this is very important because random, blind sort of reactions wouldn't produce this sort of behaviour unless those reactions themselves were ordered and constrained by laws, which we know they are. There are laws in chemistry. There are laws in physics. There are laws in biology. And so this is why Coulson goes on again to uh, follow on and say, the schoolboy who tries to separate science and religion was completely and utterly wrong. What he should have said was that science was one part of religion and the splendour and power and dynamic and progressive character of science are nothing but the splendour and power and the dynamic character of God progressively revealed to us. And of course, the Bible confirms that, that the glory of God is displayed in his handiwork, as we read in Psalms 19. As we study the laws, of course, we do them justice as we honour him. And it's interesting that C.A. Coulson goes on to quote another great physicist, and that was Max Planck, who probably is responsible for founding Quantum mechanics, one of the most advanced forms of physics and helping us to understand the nature of the world that we live in and the universe that we live in. Um, 
And again, we read uh, Max Planck, and it's in- interesting. Um, uh, C. A. Coulson writes, "It is with such fo- common features that, uh, as these, and that is talking about honouring God, who is the Creator, that it is entirely right that Max Planck should end his scientific autobiography." with these words. So these are the writings of the great physicist Max Planck. Religion and natural science are fighting a joint battle in an incessant, never-relaxing crusade against scepticism and against dogmatism and against disbelief and against superstition. And the rallying cry of this crusade, uh, crusade has always been and always will be on to God. And I think this is one of the important things that few people would realise that these great physicists such as Maxwell, um, Max Planck, and mathematicians and chemists like um, uh, Pagliani and uh, and, uh, C.A. Coulson uh, were really aware of the role that God played uh, and recognising that there was a God who created our amazing universe and system that we're studying. And the more we study it, we realise the more evidence there is for a God who created these laws. I don't know for sure why uh, people who are atheists and within our education system have worked so hard to remove the Christian faith from our education system. But it is clearly wrong to do so. And it is uh, a terrible shame. I can only, you know, I, I can only guess that the reason is that they've adopted this view that man is master and therefore is not limited by some external supernatural God. Whereas the Bible clearly, which we believe, is, which I believe has been inspired by God, that people received their thoughts supernaturally from God that influenced their, their minds. And remember, our consciousness is something that is non-material. We can't you know, measure its volume. We can't measure the mass of our thoughts. It's non-material. But God influences our consciousness and inspired the writing of the Bible. And God, who created the world, also thus communicated with the godly people, highly moral people, and gave us the what are the basic principles of morality, the Ten Commandments. And it seems to me that people today want to make their own laws. They don't want to be responsible to some external lawgiver. But that same lawgiver that gave us moral laws gave us the laws of physics and chemistry. And we also need to remember that without the moral law of honesty and integrity, science can't do science. Unless scientists are honest and straight, we don't get scientific values that really work. And so the whole thing comes down to, and where Jesus said, God is truth. And this is a very, very important area. You've been listening to Faith and Science. And we have so much evidence for the existence of God, for the existence of a creator, for the evidence for the existence that evolution is absolutely impossible and could not be responsible for all the new body parts on earth or of all the different creatures on earth. We have overwhelming evidence for these. And in these programs, we present some of the evidence. So I'd like to encourage you to go back through some of the uh, programs that we have done over the past few years. Remember, you can find these programs by Googling 3abnaustralia.org.au and click on the Listen button. And remember, too, that you can share these with your friends Tell other uh, folk about them because there are so many misconceptions out in our community and education system that are turning people to doubt the existence of the Christian God and the Christian worldview, despite the overwhelming evidence. You've been listening to Faith and Science. I'm Dr. John Ashton. Have a great day. been listening to a production of 3ABN Australia Radio.